Atlanta Street Church of Christ, 1724. Atlanta Street Church that I believe in God, doesn't care where you've been, only where you are going. We welcome you back mm -hmm. to part three. Uh, we've come too far to turn around. We're right. over to Exodus chapter 16. One more part on next week, Lord, let's just see it. But uh, we're emphasizing that uh, through our journeys, through all our hard times, that God didn't bring us this far just to leave us. We're going to go right. to Exodus chapter 16, uh, pick up around about verse number one. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. Certainly thank you for our lives, Father. Thank you for keeping us, Father, being an ultimate keeper uh, of life, a preserver, Father, if you will, of, of itself. Father, we're grateful for you. Uh, we couldn't make it without you, Lord. We're grateful for this church here, grateful for this broadcast and certainly the hands that put the broadcast together, Father. Yeah. Pray that you to be with our minister, be with our other deacons here, Father, in our church. We pray this prayer in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Exodus chapter 14, uh, is, uh, just to kind of bring you up to speed, is we came to the children of the Israelites who uh, were moved out of a, a, a well-known, a friendly uh, territory, were moved into an unfamiliar territory. Uh, the, the Egyptians decided to uh, go after them, tried to capture them back, and uh, gods put power in a rod, and a, a rod that Moses stretched forth across the Red Sea. Uh, the sea parts on the left and the right. The children of Israel were able to go through on dry ground. Pharaoh tried to follow through, and uh, God tells Moses to close up the sea with the rod again, and uh, Pharaoh's army drowned in the Red Sea. Yeah. Uh, Exodus chapter 15, the children of Israelites, they uh, had a song to sing because God had been so good, and he had delivered them out of the mighty hand of Pharaoh. And then we get to Exodus chapter 16. So I think the last question I asked on uh, last uh, week was, would their jaw remain? Would they still feel that God is who God is? Would they still have the song? And I mentioned that sometimes in our life that things go on in our life that uh, we lose our song. But there's yeah. nothing like having your song back from, from God when God provides your song, if you will. Exodus chapter 16, verses number 1. It says, they took their journey from Elam, and all the current gates of the children of Israel came into the wilderness of Sin, it says, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month uh, after their departing out of the land of Egypt. It says, and the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. Now, these children of Israel, uh, they had a bad issue with murmuring. Uh, it seems like one or two things went wrong and they began to murmur. Now, I'm talking about the children of Israel, but I do want you to relate this to today. And I hope you're not like the children of Israel, but mm. if I have my guess, I know we are. Mm. Verse 3 says, And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the hand of the land, of the Lord rather, in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots, and when we did eat bread to the full, for ye have brought us forth unto this wilderness to kill this whole assembly, it says, with hunger. Then verse 4 says, Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. The Israelites' problem are... One of the problems was they didn't want to suffer or go through any trouble. Sounds like us today. Yeah. But I'm here to tell you that God is worth the wait. God has never left you, nor has or will he forsake you. Yeah. I think Isaiah, Isaiah rather had it right in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 20. He says that has thou not known, has thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, says neither is weary, uh, neither, nor is there any searching of his understanding. Uh, my advice to you and my advice to the children was to wait on God. Don't bail out on God because God doesn't bail out on you. Later on in Isaiah, it talks about that, but they that wait upon the Lord will mount up as Eagle wings, wings as eagles. They'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and not faint. Yeah. All we got to do is wait on God. Some things are simply a test for God to see if we're going to trust him or not. Well, verse number six says, Moses and Aaron said, let me look at verse five. It said, it came to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in. 
and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. It says, And Moses and Aaron said unto all the children of Israel, And even then ye shall know that the Lord hath brought you out from the land of Egypt. And in the morning then ye shall see the glory of the Lord, for that he hath heareth uh, your murmurings against the Lord. And what are we that ye murmur against us? Mm. Uh, basically saying, that, listen, we don't put ourselves up with God because we're not God. Uh, be back then. It says, And Moses said, This shall be when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat, and in the morning bread to the full. He said, For that the Lord heareth your murmurings, which ye murmur against him, and what are we? He says, Your murmurs are not against us, but against the Lord. You know, a lot of times men in leadership uh, have to go through a lot of listing of murmurs or complaints, if you will. And this scripture teaches me that a lot of times that when folk are complaining or murmuring about uh, folk teaching and preaching, that you're not complaining against the man, but you're complaining against the Lord. If that man is doing what the Lord has said, then we need to watch our murmuring and we need to watch our complaining because you just might be complaining or murmuring to the Lord. Well, uh, you get down in verse number 9. Moses spake unto Aaron, Say unto all the congregation of children of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for ye have heard your murmurings. And it came to pass, as Aaron spake unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel, that they looked toward the wilderness, and behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. Uh, the cloud is something special. If you follow us in Exodus chapter 15 and verses, uh, rather in uh, chapter 15, you would understood that the cloud uh, was a protector uh, for the faithful. Uh, then verse 11 says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. Speak unto them, saying, At evening ye shall eat flesh, and in the morning ye shall be filled with bread. And ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. And it came to pass that at evening the quails came up, covered the camp, and in the morning the dew lay round about the host. Verse 14 says, And when the dew they lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness, there lay a small round thing, as small as the frost on the ground. He says that when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is mountain, for whence uh, not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. He says, This is the thing uh, that which the Lord hath commanded, gathered of every man according to his eating, and armor for every man, according to the number of your persons, take ye every man for them which are in his tents. We, we need to be grateful. Yeah. And we need to be thankful for the manna that God delivers out of nowhere. Y'all to praise him, even shout hallelujah, yeah. and thank God for the manna that he delivers on a daily basis. My goodness, God delivers manna out of nowhere when you least expect it. He is a right on time God. Yeah. Yeah. He is a God that shows up when you really need him. He is a God that never leaves you out uh, uh, without the proper necessities. He is a God that provides you manna <laughs> when you need it. So they come in and they said, this thing, we, we don't know where this manna came from. They called it manna. They don't know what it is. They don't know where it came from. It came from God. Verse number 17 says something. The children of Israel did so, gathered some more, said some less. He says, and when they did meet it with an almond, an almond, and some uh, translations is two quarts, uh, for those that you are wondering what is that. And it says, he that gathered much had nothing cut over. And he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. And Moses said, let uh, no man leave of it till the morning. Watch this. He said, notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto Moses, but some of them left of it until the morning. And it bred worms and stank, and Moses was wroth with them. You know, some translation says that uh, it, it, uh, it bred maggots. You know, those of you know we don't want to get too graphic here, but if you leave some sour food long enough in one place, maggots will find it. So uh, the instructions were to gather what you were supposed to gather, 
and don't gather uh, none extra. But some didn't listen, of course, because they were the children of Israel and they had their own mind, just like us today. We got our own mind and we don't listen sometimes. So they got uh, left until the morning and the scripture said that it bred worms and it began to stink and Moses was angry. Verse 21 says, and they gathered every morning, every man according to his eating, and when the sun waxed hot, it melted. And it came to pass that on the sixth day, they gathered twice as much bread, two almost, for one man, and all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. Play close attention to verse 22. Verse 22 says they gathered twice as much bread on the sixth day. There's a reason for this. Well, verse 23 says, and he said unto them, this is that which the Lord hath said. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord. He says, Bake that which ye will bake today. See that which you will see, and that which remaineth over lay up for you to uh, be kept until the morning. And they laid it up till the morning, and as Moses uh, bade, and it did not stink, neither was there any worm therein. You know, it's amazing about this, this scripture. You know, earlier they, when they, when they, uh, call themselves storing up some extra for goods, it, it bred worms and it stunk. But in this situation, they, they gathered twice as much, they stored it up, and the next morning it didn't even stink, there were no worms to be found. I wonder why. It's because they did what God told them to do. Uh, verse number 25 says, Moses said, eat that today. Uh, it says, for today it is Sabbath unto the Lord. Today you shall not find it in the field. Six days ye shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in it there shall be none. Verse 27, And it came to pass that there were out uh, some of the people on the seventh day for to gather, and they found none. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long refuse ye to keep my commandments and my laws? In other words, how long are you going to disobey me? How long are you going to keep going against what I'm telling you to do? Uh, there's example after example in uh, this, this particular text that shows that if you do what God says, you'll be blessed. Mm -hmm. If you don't do what God says, you won't be blessed. It's, 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 it's quite natural. It's quite easy. It's quite understanding that you got to follow what God tells you to do, and you'll be blessed. Look at verse uh, number 29, uh, verse 30. 30 says, so the people rested on the Sabbath day. Be sure you obey exactly what God says. Uh, it will cost you less harm when you somebody say go from point A to B rather than going all the way around and trying to get to B. If you just simply go from point A to point B or just listen and do what God says do. Let's finish up here. Verse 31 says, And the house of Israel called the name thereof Mount, and it was like coriander seed white and the taste of it was like wafers made with honey and Moses said this is the thing which the Lord commanded fill an armor of it to be kept for your generations that they may see the bread wherewith I have fed you in the wilderness when I brought you forth from the land of Egypt mm -hmm. said Moses said unto Aaron take a pot and put an armor full of manna therein and lay it up before the Lord to be kept for your generations Verse number 34 says, And the Lord commanded Moses, so Aaron laid it up before the testimony to be kept. Uh, verse 35, The children of Israel did eat manna forty years until they came to a land inhabited. They did eat manna until they came unto the border of the land of Canaan. This is good. Verse number 31 through 34 tells us, Don't never forget what God has done for you. Verse 31 through 34 tells us that we ought to have a, a, a uh, remembrance of what God has done for us. Verse 31 through 34 says we ought to jot down and put on a journal or a tablet, keep in our heart what God has done for us. Verse 31 through 34 says never forget how good God has been. 31 through 34 says never forget the manna that God has provided, the quail that God has provided, never forget what God has done. Amen. God reveals his glory to the Israelites Amen. by manifesting himself in the cloud. And he satisfies their physical needs by providing quail and manna. God's daily provision of manna in the wilderness, it teaches the Israelites 
and it teaches us to look daily to God for the sustainment. Uh, the orders to only gather the needs for the day, it taught them self-control. That kept their hope for deliverance in God and not man. I just said All something right. there. That when God told them only to collect what you need or collect what I told you to, mm -hmm. it made sure for them to realize that their hope, their faith, their trust wasn't in manner, but their trust ought to have been in the one who provided the manner. Amen. I said something now. Yeah. That your hope, your trust, all not to be in the little money you think you got, right. but it ought to be in the one who provides you with the money or the little money that you have. Yeah. Your hope and trust is not in your shelter that you live in, but it's in the one who provides the shelter that you live in. Amen. Need I say that your hope and trust is not in your car, but it's in the one who provides you with the ability to ride, the one who provides you with the ability to walk, the yeah, one who yeah. provides you with the ability to talk, the one who provides you with the ability to see. That's where your hope, your trust, all not to be built on nothing less That's right. That's right. but the almighty God. The hope wasn't in the manner, but the hope is in the one who provides the manner. Praise him. The greatest danger of Israel and the greatest danger of us living today is not starvation, but it's the wrath of God. Mm. And I'm here to tell you that you don't want to be on the side where God is angry with you. No matter the journey, no matter the hill you have to climb, mm -hmm. no matter the valley you have to go through, no matter the road you have to trod, no matter the job you have to go to, no matter the people you have to deal with, mm -hmm. no matter the situation uh, you have come across, yes. no matter how dim your circumstance looks, mm -hmm. remember you've come too far All right. to turn around. Yes. Amen. And I want to leave you with a familiar verse. I think I called it the memory verse of this series. Mm -hmm. And it says something like this. That God is our refuge and our strength, mm -hmm. a very present help in trouble. Mm -hmm. uh, therefore, we not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. It says, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. Yes. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that, that, all oh that, yes. right early. The heathen rage, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. Mm -hmm. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Verse 8 says, come behold the works of the Lord. Or won't you just come and, and see what God has done? He says, what desolation you have made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease until the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow. He cutteth the spear in sunder. He, he burneth the chariot in the fire. Verse 10 says, be still and know that I am God. Mm. This scripture says, I will be exalted among the heathen. I'll be exalted in the earth. Finally, it says the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen. We encourage you next week to uh, join us again in our final uh, part of this series. We've come too far to turn around. We'll go over to Exodus chapter 17. And we'll look once again at the children. And we'll look and see uh, what obstacle the children came up against. Uh, quite naturally with all of that bread and all of that quail for 40 some odd 40 years they got a little thirsty and in Exodus chapter 17 there's going to be something that we addressed uh, how God addressed the thirst and we're going to see uh, what happens when uh, you 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 get into a tight and you're in a bind and tribulation then God will send help right early to 
hold up your arms, if you will. I don't want to get into uh, next week's lesson too much, but Exodus chapter 17 next week, if you want to read ahead, uh, we've come too far to turn around. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you once again for being who you are. We thank you, God, for always being that right on time, right early, God. Mm -hmm. Father, we certainly understand that we could do nothing without you. Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Had not it been for Christ, uh, there'd be no salvation. Had not it been for Christ for dying, Father, we would have the right to that tree of life. We, Father, we just we couldn't make it. We thank you, Father, for Christ. We thank you for uh, Christ being our mediator, Father, our go-between, our advocate, Father. Scripture call it the propitiation, Father, for our sins. And for that, we're so grateful. We thank you. Father, we ask you to be with us, continue to be with us throughout uh, this disease we're battling, Father. Mm. Father, we thank you for blessing this church. Uh, we're not selfish, Father, but we thank you for blessing all of those who have been protected from the virus. Father, those who have contracted it, Father, but are still living, we thank you. Those, Father, who have went on to glory, we still thank you for their life. And, Father, we pray that we won't get too focused on the virus, but we'll be more focused on you. Amen. It is in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.